Hello, I'm Luke Neller and welcome to Best Few Plays of the Week. In this episode we have a cool-headed tactician fighting to win the game against all odds versus a heavy-hitting heavy. Roll out! But first we have our near heroes who got our rare and prized Best Few Plays of the Week skin. Cool Attack kicks off the episode in their tier 8 French medium tank, the Barrasque. Off to a good start, Cool Attack takes one of the strongest positions on the map, the Hill on Tundra. From here, Cool Attack is able to effectively pop over the ridges to spot and shoot any unsuspecting enemies. As the game turns south, Cool Attack turns to help reset the base, and as the last allies fall, they're left in a 1v5 situation. Shutting down the three one-shot enemies pushing them on the hill quickly turns the tide in this game. Cool Attack then uses their superior view range, speed and camo to deal with the unsuspecting T-95. As the last enemy starts the cap, giving away their position, Cool Attack makes their way to deal with the invader. After a couple of bounce shots and having to reload and relocate, Cool Attack finally shuts down this game to earn the medal that everyone wants, the Kolobanov's Medal. Moving on to our second mention, we have Ming Li Pista in the Italian auto reloader, the P44 Pantara. After a slow start to the game with some attempts to take advantage of unaware enemies over the ridges and hills on Overlord, the Reds start to push the beach. Realizing this, Ming Li moves to the eastern flank and pushes out the outnumbered Reds. Adiamo! Even with the success of this push, Ming Li is forced to fall back to the safety of the ridgelines and bushes in the middle of the map. Providing crucial spotting and damage leaves just a 1v3. As their remaining allies in artillery die to a sneaky emo 2. Tens 1v3, with some luck, ends in a victory for Ming Li. For our last mention this episode, we have Crawley David in the UDES 14-5. Taking an early aggressive position in the dip in the middle of the map yields early spotting damage and a kill to top it off. Moving between bushes and buildings, David deals out punishment to any tanks caught out of position. As the last ally falls, David is left in a 1v5 situation. After an intense 1v3 brawl, David comes out on top to secure the victory. Now on to the stars of the show. Our first game we have Dam Wu 99 in their T44100 on Himmelsdorf. Dam Wu takes a nice aggressive position near the encounter cap and instantly punishes an overextended HWK12 with three shots in quick succession, sending them back to the garage for some repairs. Doodles! A bit of an overextension reveals a Ferdinand waiting for our hero and takes away a third of our HP already. After a couple of missed shots towards the hill, Damu relocates to deal with the tanks, pressuring the cap.
pushing onwards, downwards now within dueling distance of that pesky Ferdinand from earlier, who is quickly shut down and caught completely off guard. OWO? What's this? A bounce? From an ISU? Damn, we'll be thanking their lucky stars for that one. Quickly shutting down the Skoda nets them some nice tracking assistance and some damage to boot. Ouch! Not falling back quickly enough gave the ISU the opportunity to reload and give Damu a 400 high explosive slap. With their ammo rack repaired and knowing the ISU's on reload, Damu rushes towards aggressors who have come down off the hill to attack our friends. Swiftly destroying the STRV, the Tiger II, and the T-44 gives some breathing space for any who survived. Witnessing an IS-3 being put down by a Skoda makes Damu see red. CHARGE! As the last ally desperately needs help, Danwo goes back to their original position at the start of the game to apply pressure on the 50TP and the Liberté. At last, the last ally falls, even with our hero's support. Danwo is left in a 1v4 situation with very little HP left and is forced to go on the run. As our hero climbs the hill, they spot the 50TP making chase and are able to shut them down without even being spotted. Nice. After relocating over the hill, Dan Wu comes across the enemy Indian Panzer, who appears to have dropped their connection to the internet. Om nom 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 nom. Tasty free damage. Spotting the Liberté rolling down the 8th line with almost full HP sends our hero running back up the hill. But it's all a ruse to trick the Liberté as Damu cuts over the rebel pile to deal with the ISU and the cap. Ha! Getting unspotted and keeping the ISU spotted gives our hero the drop on them and makes them shoot in panic. Damwoo's superior DPM lets them get two shots in before the ISU has even reloaded. Whoosh, not close enough. Now where's that French heavy? Storza, it appears to be just as surprised as Damwoo is to see them. Getting unspotted and relocating yet again gives Damu the drop on the Liberté. With the Liberté now permatracked and having missed its shot, our hero can finish off the game in a victory. What a tense ending to this game! With 8,016 damage, 10 kills and 2,279 base experience, Damu showed us how to keep calm and collected even when in the face of defeat. Congratulations! Their contender of this episode is 4Q6WUT85 in the tier 10 Russian heavy tank object 277 on the Mannerheim line. You know, normally I try to research names to find out what they mean, but seriously, what is good enough for yours? Take in position on the ridgeline down by the Eastern Pass gives our fighter an early shot into the enemy IS-7, but not without consequences. Overpeaking to take that shot also receives a nasty hit from an enemy T110E3. A nice cupola shot on the enemy 277 makes them fall back. As his allies push the corner, Wood punishes the IS-7 who's caught between a rock and a hard place. Now Wood pulls an ace out of their sleeve, showing us how to stealthily cross the water without drowning. Don't try this at home. Surprise! Didn't expect me here, did ya? Wood is now in the perfect position to deal with the base camping Grille 15 and Leopard 1.
pushing in towards the enemy base reveals an FB-4005 waiting. But the enemy is soon distracted by the other allies pushing in, allowing our fighter to charge and take them out. With no support left, the enemy RT is quickly dispatched. Wood now heads back towards their base to help with the defense whilst leaving the friendly IS-7 to apply capping pressure. However, they head off to reset their base, leaving the IS-7 exposed to shots in the back. Going back to deal with that pesky tank, nets a shot into him, but with superior mobility, they get away again for now. Relocating back towards the base, which still has enemies near it, proves to be the right choice as the cap siren blares. Quickly shutting down the one-shot pattern leaves the enemy invader with no more support, meeting its demise soon after it attempts to flee the scene. Going towards the enemy cap gets what spotted, revealing the rough location of the last remaining red. Pushing towards where he suspects the light tank is lurking, Wood preloads and high explosive shell. Slamming it into the light as soon as it's spotted and finishes off the game with a ram. GG. Wow, this game was intense. With 12,900 damage, 8 kills, and 1,842 base experience as a tier 10, this game was definitely worthy contender for the title. Congratulations, 4Q6WUT85. And that's it for this episode, but now it's time for you to vote and decide the best replay of the week. Was it Damu99, the cool headed T44100 on Himmelsdorf? Or was it 4Q6WUT85, the heavy hitting heavy in the Object 277? Or do you think you had a better replay? If so, send them in to Best Replays of the Week or just complain in the comments below. Episode 103's Best Replay of the Week, as voted by you, was. Trefnix, the Centurion 5 1, holding the lighthouse on cliff. Congratulations! I'm Luke Nella, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time!